think about, uh, there are many things to share from that Sam, but uh, uh, because of the lack, I mean, lack of time, we will be just uh, listening to some of the verses from that Sam, and uh, we will be getting the message of God from that particular Sam. I mean, so this is a, is a blessed Sam of, uh, uh, of David. It, it believes that we, it is written by David. At the same time, you know, when we uh, think about these Psalms, maybe uh, uh, from 146 to 150, okay, that those five Psalms are known as the Hallelujah Psalms. Okay, the Hallelujah Psalms means uh, uh, there is a reason for that because you now every Psalm that means uh, from Psalm number 146 and 47 and 48 and 49 and 50, all these Psalms are starting or beginning with a, with a praising God and also it ends with the, I mean, praising God. So there are many reasons for the believers of God, for the people of God to praise God. Okay, so we are praising God and we are, I mean, clapping our hands and we are, we are, we are praising the name of the Lord, we are singing songs. So what are the reasons for that? We have to understand, you know, there are many reasons that we are praising God, we are blessing the name of the Lord. So those reasons are written in all these psalms. Okay? So that's the reason that these five psalms are known as the Hallelujah Psalms. Hallelujah means? Praise. Hallelujah means? Praise. praise the Lord. That's it. Okay? Hallelujah means praise the Lord. Hallelujah is the Hebrew word for I mean, praising God and praise the Lord. So we are praising God and saying Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. I mean, blessing the name of the Lord. There, there are many reasons. Okay. So especially... This Psalm 146 is beginning with a personal decision to praise God throughout the life. Okay, and when you think about these five, I mean, chapters or five, I mean, uh, five Psalms, you will understand. You just look at uh, to those, uh, I mean, five Psalms. You will understand every Psalm has something to say that the children of God, you worship God. The children of God, you thank God for what you have received from the Lord. Especially Psalm number 140, 47 tells us that it's good and pleasant to praise the Lord. And Psalm number 148 reminds us that when we praise God, we join with all creation in heaven and earth. That means when we praise God, when we thank God, we are joining with all other creations in heaven and earth that they are also worshipping God. Okay? All the creations that God has created in this world, both in heaven and in earth, they are worshipping God. So we are joining with them in worship. And also, Psalm number 149 it says that God's people are increased to worship joyfully. You know, when we worship God, we are supposed to worship God joyfully. You know, there are some people sitting very sadly and worshiping God. That that shows that again, they, they, their heart is filled with sadness. You know, there are sometimes, you know, we will be feeling that sadness in our heart and there are some painful situations in our lives. At the same time, we are not supposed to sit in the process of with a sadful face or sadful heart because we have the joy in us, right? We have the joy in us and we have the happiness in our, in our lives because when I mean, God has called us as his children. So as we are the children of God, as we are I mean, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and as we are saying that we are the saints of God, we are worshipping with a joyful heart. Right? We are worshipping with a joyful heart. And also, the last Psalm, 150. How many Psalms are there in the Bible? 150 Psalms are there. And in the last Psalm, 150, that tells us why and how everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Why should we praise the Lord? There are many reasons. Okay, Especially, you know, you, you can understand that it is not written that at uh, the heading that who wrote this Psalm. Okay? So we cannot say that. We cannot say that this is written by David. At the same time, I believe, personally believe, and they and the most of the scholars they believe that this psalm also is written by David. Because the Psalm number 145 is written by David for sure. Psalm number 145 is written by David. Then, then that's the reason that these Psalms also may be the continuation of Psalm number 
145 and here David repeatedly encouraging the people to praise God's name in each psalm. Hallelujah. And we do not know what is the context of this psalm. Now, every psalm, when the psalmist is writing a psalm, there is a, there is, there is a context, right? There is a background. Okay? So according to that context or according to the, 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 the background only, maybe some, some psalmist, the, the psalm writers were having uh, uh, different, different particular uh, what is that uh, experiences in their life? Okay, so in that time when they are writing, all those verses are coming from from their heart and the, and, uh, and and out of the experience that they are going through. Okay, especially you know when David was writing the Psalms, David was writing from the Psalms from from out of his experience. Okay, he was going through a, a difficult situation, so that reason that he was writing some Psalms. Okay. There are sometimes, you know, the joyful situation in the lives of the people. You know, some of the psalmists or some of the songwriters were writing the song or psalm because they were so joy in the presence of God because they received the blessings of God in the in the in the in the previous days. So here also we understand about the people of Israel. Maybe David is writing this psalm only because of. That the, the after the return of Israel from Babylonian captivity, at the at the completion of rebuilding of the Jerusalem wall and the temple, we know that the people of Israel they were in Babylon, they were captives in Babylon. But after coming back from there, returning from there, the people are singing unto the Lord and praising the name of the Lord only because of what they have received. From the presence of God. So they were captives in Babylon. Okay. So after reaching back from Babylon. After reaching to Jerusalem. These people are praising God. Because they knew that. We are going to rebuild. The temple of Jerusalem. We are going to rebuild. The, the wall of Jerusalem. Okay. So it, it was actually. It was a pathetic situation for the people of Israel. You know. In their life, they had to go to Babylon. They had to go to Egypt once. Then they had to go to I mean, Babylon also. Only because of the, sometimes because of their sins. Because of their disobedience to God. Because of their rebellious, I mean, a character towards God. But, but, but God was teaching them. God was giving his instructions that even though you are in captivity, you will be once delivered from that place and you will come back to Jerusalem and that's the reason now these people are praising God, giving thanks to the Lord and saying, yes Lord, we are thanking you because we are back. Okay? So from the captivity, when the people are coming back to the, uh, returning back to the, the, the previous stage or the Jerusalem, they have many things to say and they are saying now we are happy to worship the Lord. No, when we were in, in Babylon, when we were in Egypt, we were not able to worship God in, 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 in a freedom. We didn't have the freedom there. But now we have the freedom and we have the Jerusalem temple and we have all the facilities here and we are worshipping God. At the same time, after coming back from captivity to Jerusalem, sometimes the people of Israel, they went back to the other gods and goddesses and they start to worship the, the, the idols. After coming back to Jerusalem, you think about uh, I mean, what, what would be the reason for that? You know, the reason is sometimes you know, when the people are having all the facilities, they forget to worship God. Right? You know, in our families also, when we have all the facilities, when we have all the Things that to, uh, that we need in, the, in this world, you know, we, we forget to worship God. We don't remember that okay, I should worship God because when I have everything, I have everything. You know, uh, usually the people uh, when they are receiving a home, uh, a own house, or a car, or having all the things settled and uh, the children are settled and everything is okay, then they say that okay, okay, we have everything and we don't want to worship God. We don't want to worship God. It's not like that. The Bible says that. You know, in all situation you have to glorify the name of the Lord, right? In all your situation, even though you are going through the painful situation, even though you are having all the blessings with you, and even though you are having the all facilities with you, you have to worship God. You have to glorify the name of the Lord. 
Even you are going through the painful situation also, praise God. That's what the, what the Bible says, right? When praise God. Devate, Namada Jivate Nana and Pogula Vindiana. Kartavana Namada Ayadikanam Sudikanam Kara Mandar Mariamo, Namuke, I mean I put prayasula samayatum, dukumula samayatum, kartava and the Ara di Kimball, Namada Kartavani and Grang and the Chulli Bode Kim. Hallelujah. So every situation I mean, that we are going through, we are supposed to worship God. We are supposed to worship God. That's what we read here. Even the people of Israel, even though they were having all the facilities in Jerusalem, they just I mean, turned to the, the idol worship. I mean, only because they were not regarding the works of God. They were not regarding, they were not considering the work of God, how they were delivered from the captivity. Hallelujah. So this evening, this morning, let me encourage every one of you that uh, when, when, when we are getting all the facilities, when we are getting all the blessings from God, are you just remembering that I should worship God? Hallelujah. Many times that's a, that's a fault that we are doing. That's a mistake that we are doing. And we are thinking, oh Lord, you bless me with all the blessings. Oh Lord, I am okay. I am comfortable. And I am okay with these, all these things. But we, we just, I mean, forget that. Okay, God has given all these blessings upon us. And, and that's the reason that I took this, uh, I mean, uh, took this, uh, I mean, uh, Sam for, for today's message. Especially, when you go through that Sam and all the verses, we will understand that. Why should we worship God? And why God has given the, given the life and the breath? Okay? Now think about why the why the psalmist is emphasizing about the importance of praising God. Why the psalmist is emphasizing praising God, praising God, importance of praising God. Hallelujah. Why we are here today? Is it because only because of that today is a Sunday? No. It's not because of the Sunday that we are here. We are here to worship God, right? We are here to worship God. And uh, I think, you know, the people, those who are sitting here, uh, while seeing your faces, I understand that you are not, you have, you are not here to worship God. You are here to simply sit here, spending two hours, and listening to the, the youth programs and all, enjoying the songs and everything, going back to home and uh, engaged in all those things. Okay? So, we are not here to do all those things, but we are here to worship God. You know? When we worship God, when we sit in the presence of God, first thing, come in time. Hello. Come in time. Okay? Just before, maybe at least 10 minutes before be here, come here and prayerfully sit here and we will worship God. Okay? Come in right time and be in a worshipping mode and worshipping attitude. Okay? That's the reason that we are coming here and simply sitting there and going back after the service. It is not the, the, the regular, I mean, I mean, rule of the Bible. That Bible says that you have to have that attitude of worship when you are sitting there. Okay? So, we have many reasons, right? We have many reasons. So, all, every Sam, the Sam is star emphasizing, you praise God. The people of God, you praise God. Praise God. Lift His name. We are not lifting any one of the pastors here. We are not lifting any one of the, the, the brothers or sisters here. But we are lifting the name of the Lord in front of us. I mean, the name of the Lord means no, there is no I mean, picture or something here. There is no image of something here of God. There is no I mean, idols here. But we are worshipping God in truth and spirit. With the spirit that we are worshipping God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that we don't have a God. We have a God and a God is in our heart and we can see that God with our, I mean, not with our internal, I mean, external eyes, but we are seeing our God with our internal eyes. Inner eyes. Inner eyes. Can we have an inner eye? So we are seeing God, the face of God and worshiping God. That is called the worship in spirit. Okay? Worship in spirit. You know, suppose the worship team is always standing here and they are leading the service, right? Okay, I, I'll be having to, uh, to I mean, speak about the worship okay, in, the, in the coming days, okay? So, I'm, I'm preparing for that, okay? So, how to worship and what is worship and all those things, okay? We'll come to come back to that, okay? The, the worship team is standing here and they are worshipping and they are leading the worship, okay? I think many of the people, those who are standing here, they are looking at them. They are looking at them. I can see, see from here that you all are looking at them 
and you are seeing okay how they are singing and how they are standing there and what is their dress and how they are performing that program it's not a performing program you know worship is not a performing program it's a real truth and spirit worship you know you are not supposed to look into the worship team they are leading us they are leading us and look at god see the face of god with your i mean in the eyes and worship god in truth and spirit Hallelujah. That is the real spirit and that is the real worship. Hallelujah. When you worship in that way, in that way, that will happen there. The worship team will lead the song. When let them sing, let them play the guitar, let them play the keyboard. Not a problem. But they can do that. But you and me are standing there and worshiping the living God, the Almighty God. Hallelujah. That's the reason I said, I mean, simply don't sit there when the worship team is leading the song. Don't simply sit there, but trust in the Lord. Worship God in truth and spirit. With your spirit, you can worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. So we'll come back to that point. You know, the reason is very clearly written in Psalm number 150, verse 6. We will read that verse. Okay, Psalm number 150, verse 6. Okay. The reason why the psalmists are emphasizing the importance of the worship and importance of Praising God, praising God, yeah. Okay. So we have the life and the breath, right? We have the life and the breath. Even Acts chapter 17 verse 25 says that God gives us life and breath. Okay. Hallelujah. That's it. That's the main reason that we are worshipping God. Hallelujah. We received the life and we received the breath and we are living today only because God has permitted, God has allowed and God has added one more day in our life, one more moment in our life. That's the reason that we are worshipping God, right? Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands and praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, what is the reason that the, that the psalmist are always emphasizing the people? You praise God, praise God, praise God, bless the name of the Lord. Every psalm, I mean, beginning and ending with praising God and encouraging the people to praise God. The reason is we have the life and breath. And God has given the life and God has given the breath and that is the reason that you are supposed to worship God. Okay? The Bible says that the dead people never worship God, right? The dead people and the, the, the people, those who are gone into the grave, they are not worshipping God. But you people and myself, I am worshipping God because I am living. Come back to that point. We are worshipping God because we have life. We have life. We have life. Think about it. There are many people, those who are not able to worship today because they are lost. They are lost. But you and me are standing here or sitting here and living here in this world and we are supposed to worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank the Lord because we received this life and this birth from God alone. So, I would like to share maybe, maybe uh, mainly four things. From, the, from this psalm uh, regarding uh, why God has given us the life and breath. Okay? Why God has given us the life and breath. Okay? There are many, many, I mean, there are many, many things that we can share from that psalm. At the same time, I mean, mainly four things that I would like to share with you this morning. I mean, first of all, life is given by God to praise Him. Okay? First thing is, life is given from God to praise Him. Okay? And especially in verses 1 and 2. You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord of my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. That means the psalmist, first of all, he is encouraging every one of us and saying that praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then after that, he is taking a personal decision that I will praise the Lord forever and ever when I am living in this world. The first thing is, he says that, praise the Lord. Then he said that, 
Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Now you can also speak to your soul today. Okay? You can speak to yourself. It's not a no. Normally the pastors are encouraging the people. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Then one praise the Lord will come from there. Right? Okay? When the pastor is saying ten times, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. At least one praise the Lord is not coming from the audience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, see, see, the, <laughs> the people, many a times, the people are worshipping God only because pastor said it. Right? No, only because pastor is like a forcing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So here, you know, what, what the David is doing here. He is not only encouraging the other people to worship the Lord. Uh, I, I know, I know. That there, are, there are many pastors. Not in America, in Kerala. Okay. If I, I talk about Kerala, I, I, you, you, you won't be I mean, having any problem. So, in Kerala, I have seen many pastors. When they come to the pulpit, when they come to the pulpit, they will be jumping and praising and uh, what is that? Uh, they will be uh, encouraging other people, forcing other people, worship God, worship God, Sotra Bara, Sotra Bara, Sotra Bara. When they go and sit there, somebody sitting like this, not clapping their hands, but when they stand on the pulpit, they force the people, clap your hands, clap your hands, worship God. But when they are sitting there, sitting without worshipping, watching all the people what you are doing. Okay? This is not right according to the word of God. Because even if it is a pastor or elder or the prominent members of the church or somebody who is leading the church, whoever it may be, the person, those who are sitting in the presence of God, he must worship God. Whoever it may be, he is supposed to worship God. He is not supposed to watch all the people, but he is supposed to worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the reason that David, the psalmist, is saying to himself, Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And he declared that praises unto God. And he is taking a personal decision that I will praise the name of the Lord. Forever and ever, that means when I live in this world. Even I reach in heaven also, it's our duty. Okay? When not only in the earth, we are praising God, even we reach in heaven also, that is going to be our duty. The praising God, praising God, praising God always. Hallelujah. There are, we can see that the angels are worshipping God with the, I mean, with the six wings. I mean. So they are worshipping God, worshipping God. And we also are going to heaven to worship God. Hallelujah. You know, and he made that personal decision that I will worship the Lord forever and ever. For example, you know, when we are grateful to God for, for what we have received, okay, when we are grateful to God for the life which we have received from the Lord, amen, and when we are grateful to God for everything, every time, we will overcome the struggles and we will stop complaining. No? This is the main, main problem with uh, uh, all of the people today, the believers today, that they are always complaining in the presence of God. They are complaining to the other people, complaining to the pastor, and complaining to God always, oh, I don't have that, and I am going through this problem, I have this struggle, all these things. Let all the problems be there. Let all the struggles be there. I mean, if you are grateful to God, what you have, if you are grateful to God for what you receive from the Lord. Grateful to God for your life and breath. And that will help you to overcome the struggles of this world. That will overcome and that will help you to overcome the struggles of this world. Because we know that the Bible says that God is working all things together for the Yusakarum right? God is working everything together for good. For good. What is the meaning of that? You know, when we are enjoying the presence of God, we are enjoying the blessings of God, think about sometimes we will be having to go through the struggles also. We will have the painful situation. 
But remember, even in the midst of the painful situation, even in the midst of the difficult situation, understand that that's the, that's the presence of God is there. Hallelujah. And that will encourage you. That will help you to go through that and overcome that. Because God is working everything together for good. Sakalavum, nanmai kai, kuri gabiri pikinna, deyagatata sanikin. Hallelujah. And secondly, secondly, we are thinking about, maybe verse 3, 4 and 5. Let's read that verse maybe. Verses 3, 4 and 5. That the, the, the secondly, we can understand that uh, the, the life is given by God to always trust in God. First of all, first of all, the life is given or the birth is given by God, and that's the reason we are praising God. That means we are living in this world. We are living in this world. Secondly, you know, the, the life is given by God to always trust Him. We always trusting in God. That means verses 3 and 4 says that verse the danger of the trusting in man or in the princess. Okay? Verse 3. Okay? Do not trust in princes, in mortal man, in whom there is no salvation. His spirit departs. He returns to the earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Okay? So why it is said that you should not trust in man? Why you should not trust in the princes of this world? The reason is very clearly written that they are subjected to the death and their plans are perishable. When they are immortal, they are mortal people. Okay? They are not immortal people. So you have to trust in the Lord always. Okay? So he is explaining in that uh, verses 3 and 4 what is the danger of trusting in man and the, and the princes. Okay? And in the same I mean, a thing is mentioned in uh, Psalm number 118 verses 8 and 9 also that it is better to trust in the Lord than trusting in the man. It is better to trust in the Lord than trusting in the princess. Okay? You know, suppose there are many people to help you. There are many people you can trust and there are many people that you can have confidence in them and you are thinking that, okay, those people will be helping me in my trouble. Of course, of course. Okay? The, the difference between those princes or different between those prominent or the richest persons in this world and God is, for example, I tell you, no, uh, think, just suppose that I'm a richest person of this church. Okay? Suppose that I'm the richest person of this church and Cedric, a poor person, he is coming to me today and asking, Pastor, I need hundred dollars. If I have, I will. And second day, he comes and asking, Pastor, I need 100 more. If I have, I will give that. Third day, he comes and asking, Pastor, I need one more, one more, some more money, some more money. Third day also, I will give. Okay? And the fourth day, when Cedric is coming, I will say, okay, this is the don't, don't repeat it because every day you are asking me, I am giving, I am giving, I am giving. Again you are coming. Again you are coming. Said so again, don't ask me again. Because I have the limitation, right? Even though I am a rich person, I have the limitation. And if I, I if I allow Cedric more and more, and uh, I will I will do many things for him. And afterwards, when if if, if I have a, I have a property also, if he is in a need, and I will I will sell it and give all the money to. Centric also. Then after that, what I will do? What Centric will do? When that is finished, you know, I cannot help you forever and ever. We have limitation. The man, the princes of this world, they have a limitation. Okay? They have a limitation in their facilities, in their properties, and also in their heart of giving, spending money. They have a limitation. The people of this world, the princes of this world, the men of this world, they have a limitation. But our God never says, I cannot help you. Hallelujah. When today you go to God, every moment you are going to God and asking for the help, 
God is saying, I can give you, I can help you, I can be with you, always, always, always. Hallelujah. This morning, that is the trust in God, and we are trusting in the Almighty God, who says that, I will be with you, always, till the end of this world. That's a greatest word, that, that's a greater promise that God is giving to every one of us this morning. Hallelujah. When the people of this world, when the princes of this world, when the political leaders of this world, when the religious leaders of this world are leaving the people, leaving the followers without helping. But God says that I can help you every moment, every day. Praise to God. Every day, approach to God, He is ready to give and ready to, I mean, I mean, provide all the blessings upon the people of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. So let us not trust in man or princes because they are also subjected to the death. And their plans are perishable. It is very clearly written that. Their plans are perishable. But God's plans never fail. God's plans never fail. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe that God's plans will never perish? Hallelujah. God's plans will never fail. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are under the plan of God. We are under the plan of God. And we are worshiping God only because but God is enabling us to worship God, enabling us to live in this world. Hallelujah. Firstly, in Psalm number 20, verse 7. Psalm number 20 verse 7, it says that some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but I will trust in the Lord and worship the Lord forever and ever. No? Some may trust in horses, but why it is written there like that? In Psalm number 20 verse 7, you know, among the people of Israel, the Jewish people, they were always going for, when they were going for the war or the battle, no, they are using the horses and the chariots. Okay, so they are saying that some people are always trusting in the horses and some people are trusting in chariots and some people are trusting in the material blessings. But we people are always trusting in the Almighty God, in the name of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Because our help is coming from there. Our help is coming from there. That's the reason that always we are trusting in the Lord. And thirdly, the third thing is thirdly, life is given by God to know who God is. Okay? So uh, that is from maybe uh, verses 5 to 9. Verses 5 to 9. Let's read that verse. Also. Okay. Blessed is he who hopes in the God of Jacob, yeah. whose hope is in the Lord your God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Okay, so who God is, praising God, that means thirdly, the life is given to us in order to know who God is. Now most of the time, the people of God, the children of God, they does not remember who is our God. Okay, so they think that okay, okay when we need something, so let us approach God and let us get it or let us receive that and they are just leaving from there. But Bible says that it's not only that you are approaching God to get something, but always, every moment of our lives that we are supposed to be in the presence of God, to praise God, that we are receiving many more blessings from God. Amen? So we are living in this world, or God has given us the life in order to know who God is. Especially, there are many things mentioned in these verses. Maybe verses five to, I mean, uh, five to nine. Okay, and it says that He is our Creator. Who is our God? He is our Creator. He is our Provider. He is our Deliverer, and He is our Protector, and He reigns forever and ever. These are the main reasons that which is written in that psalm, in this psalm, that God is our Protector. God is a deliverer and he is a creator. Okay? Just think about, I mean, he, God is a creator. That means we are the children of God. And that is a privilege that we have. That God is a creator 
and he is sustaining us, he is protecting us, and he is providing us, and he is delivering us. And also the last thing is, I mean, he reigns forever. A God reigns forever. That means the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God means God has the power to control everything and everyone. Then God can do anything that he wishes. Then it's not uh, according to our plan or it's not uh, according to our I mean, counsel or decision that God is doing something. But God is doing everything according to his plan and his purpose and his glory. Then, so that's the reason. Thirdly, I mean, the psalmist is saying that our life is given by God to know who God is. Then, and fourthly, he will conclude with that fourth point. He says that Man is given to live and reign with God forever and ever. Okay? Living and reigning with God forever. Man, so in verse 10 it says that the Lord will reign forever. Your God assigned to all generations. Praise the Lord. Our God is reigning forever and ever. At the same time, it's a great privilege for the people of God, the children of God, that we have that position, we have that privilege even today. And in the eternity or in the during the time of the thousand year of uh, a millennial kingdom, we will rule with Jesus Christ. How I many of you believe that we also will be ruling over the nations? We will be reigning over the nations one day with Jesus Christ and that authority is given for the people of God. Because we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are the children of God. We are the saints of God. Hallelujah. After the second coming of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, we will be in heaven for seven years. After that, the great tribulation, after the great tribulation period, we all will come together downward to the earth. Amen. We will come back to the earth and we are going to rule with Jesus Christ all over the world. That means all the nations of this world. Hallelujah. So we are waiting for that and that's the reason in the fourth point, it says that God has given the life now to live with Jesus Christ. Right? Now, when you are living with Jesus Christ now, you will have the position. You will have the privilege to reign with him. Amen. So we are waiting for that. Let us all come in us with the mighty hand of God and let's pray together this morning. Hallelujah. As we were listening to the word of God, let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. We are going to pray and we are going to conclude the message today. Hallelujah. God's presence is in our midst this morning.